let's have a look at, uh, or not a look, but a discussion about variable costing and absorption costing. And as we went through the chapter, we saw that absorption costing can sort of warp uh, some of the numbers and give us a misleading indication of what's going on. Not only that, we can play with production to get operating profit. Whereas with variable costing, only revenue drives operating profit. So that if revenues are flat, operating profit should also be flat. If revenues are dropping, operating profit will tell us that that's what's going on. We don't have to pull apart different variables. Under absorption costing, we have seen that both revenue and production decisions can drive operating profit. If we produce more than what we need, we can charge some of that fixed manufacturing overhead cost in each unit and defer it into inventory for some later period. And remember that fixed manufacturing overhead component does not change whether we produce one unit or 1,000 units. So the more we produce, we have the illusion of lower cost of goods sold, right? So if inventories increase over a period of time, some fixed manufacturing overhead cost is deferred into inventory. In other words, it's not, it doesn't hit the income statement. And you'll recall back in chapter two, we talked, about, uh, we talked about product costs, and when we went through chapter 3 and chapter 4, job costing and process costing, we made it very clear that these product costs do not hit the income statement until something is sold. So if it's not sold, it doesn't hit the income statement. It's deferred in inventory, so that operating profit will be overstated. Now, that is not a statement of fact. By saying operating profit will be overstated, that is not a statement of fact. That is a statement of opinion. From those who argue that variable costing is superior, they point out that operating profit will be overstated in periods where inventory is building. That is only an opinion. If inventories decrease, then some fixed manufacturing overhead cost that was deferred in some previous period is now released from inventory and the opinion here is that operating profit will be understated. It's very important that you keep in mind that what I'm writing in white, operating profit will be overstated or operating profit will be understated is not a statement of fact. It is a statement of opinion. It it, it depends on what you mean by overstated or understated. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle back to this right at the very end of this video, so, so don't go away. But for now, those who think that variable costing is superior take these two points to say that the use of variable costing eliminates the temptation to use production to boost operating profit. So if we're facing a tough quarter, a manager might say, a production manager might say, I can make my numbers by making more units. Yeah, we don't have a market for them. They won't sell, but I get to spread my overhead costs over more units. So whatever was sold will be sold at a lower cost of goods sold. It'll look like we have a higher gross margin, thereby goosing operating income. The other costs will just hide in inventory. I'll get a promotion and a raise and it'll be some other manager's problem to release that stuff from inventory and suffer the lower operating income. By using variable costing, it eliminates that temptation. So no inventory buildups due to trying to make numbers. You might have an inventory buildup for some other reason. Your sales forecast may just be completely wrong. Take Blackberry, for instance, right? Now, if inventories are insignificant, variable costing offers little value. And since more and more companies are moving towards just-in-time inventory management uh, methods and lean production, more and more of them are doing that, that variable costing is sort of, you looked at saying, well, it's a lot of extra work for very little. And if your inventories don't fluctuate a lot from period to period, again, variable costing offers little value. Now, let's go back to these opinions, the overstated and understated part. The advocates of absorption costing say, hold on a minute now. There's no overstating or understating. This is the matching principle. It just better matches costs with revenues. If we don't sell a product, why are we charging any cost for it? In other words, we're not matching revenues with cost by charging everything right away. 
It's an inventory. It costs us that much to make. It should be matched with revenues. Secondly, by using variable costing, you might not pay attention to the fixed cost, but by putting the fixed costs in the product, it doesn't shift focus away from the fixed costs. And let's face it, if you're going to make something, well, there's going to be fixed costs. That's part of the product production, or that sort of, sorry, that's part of the production process. That's part of the cost of making the product. It has to be in there. So, yeah, kind of use your own mind and decide which one you like better.